Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to Condo Insider, and uh, thank you for joining us. And we have with us today as our guest, Daria Lloyd Goto. Uh, she is the Chief uh, Enforcement Officer for an agency, state agency called RICO. So what does RICO stand for? RICO stands for the Regulated Industries Complaints Office, not to be confused with federal RICO, which is racketeering and organized crime. Okay. And so what, what part of the state government is RICO part of? RICO is a division of the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. Our oversight is over anybody with a professional or vocational license. So contractors, mixed martial arts, massage therapy, uh, we prosecute licensed activity and also unlicensed activity. Okay, and so when, when we talk about enforcement, because you're the chief enforcement officer, right? What exactly do you do? I want to talk about your job first. What do you do? Sure. Uh, well, just by way of background, I w I've been with the agency for, for a while now. Mm -hmm. I started as a staff attorney. I was the supervising attorney for over 10 years with the agency. And in the past uh, three or four years have been the complaints and enforcement officer. So right now, uh, I handle administration work on behalf of the office. That includes uh, meeting with the RICO supervisors, uh, addressing addressing overall issues, including you know our presence in the community, what areas of enforcement we're, we're uh, focusing on, uh, dealing with legislative issues as they come up, and working with the various boards and commissions on enforcement-related concerns. And how much how much staff do you have to help you? We have. 11 intake investigators, and those are the folks that initially they answer the phone, help you file a complaint, conduct preliminary investigations from the office. We have uh, 21 field investigators, and we've got offices on, uh, on uh, four different locations off island, so Kona in Hilo, uh, Kauai, and also on Maui. Uh, and those are housed primarily, uh, those are housing primarily uh, field investigators. All of the legal work is done from the Honolulu office, and we have uh, 10 staff attorneys right now. And how many complaints do you get every year? Well, we, we're, right now we're regulating over 49 different professions and vocations. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like a complete list of everything that we have oversight over, you can go to the RICO website. And what is and the RICO website? It is uh, CCA, which stands for Commerce and Consumer Affairs, dot Hawaii, dot gov, mm -hmm backslash RICO, R-I-C-O. And that's streaming now underneath. Okay, right? perfect. So that if anybody <laughs> is interested, they can go there. Um, now one of the, well, two of the industries that, that are part of your oversight, that you, you your department oversees, are condominiums and managing agents. Right. Right, I mean, right. that's the focus of our show, because that's what we do with, the, uh, with Condo Insider. So what kind of complaints do you get regarding uh, condos and ma managing agents? Okay, well, you know, the office is a busy place. Yeah. Uh, and I really have to give a lot of credit to our staff because they deal with a lot of callers every year, a lot of complaints that come in every year. Uh, in 2016, we processed somewhere around 2,800 complaints uh, and helped to resolve an additional 7,000 matters. Wow. So in terms of that resolution piece, it may be callers calling to our office uh, because they, they might have uh, a, the, a dispute with a licensee. Mm -hmm. So for example, I got my car fixed and I want a copy of the repair estimate, but the licensee won't respond to me. If we can help facilitate that, short of the consumer filing a, an actual complaint with us, then we're, we're happy to try to do that. So a lot of that, the, the piece that we do is giving information, getting people to the right place. Uh, when you're the complaint, when you have complaints in your title, uh, everybody seems to find your office. So a mm -hmm. lot of what we do on the intake piece is helping consumers maybe find where they need to be, uh, need to, uh, the right agency that they need to be talking to. In terms of condominium information, uh, RICO's jurisdiction is limited in terms of condominiums. Uh, associations are self-governing, mm -hmm. which really means that they should be handling the governance issues in-house. But one area that RICO does assist with is on the records piece. Okay. Why don't you explain that? Sure. Uh, as self-governing entities, I think that really one of the, one of the ways that owners can participate is to make sure that they have all the information about the association that they need. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so the law does provide that owners are uh, entitled to, to access certain types of information. And uh, we have a handy dandy uh, brochure information for condo owners about access to information and that's available on the RICO website. And that really follows the statutes that, that uh, address uh, condominium association records and lays out for owners what they may be entitled to see. And the reason why owners need records is to meaningfully participate in the self-governance process, they need to have access to information. So you're talking about board minutes and can they get financial information? Board minutes, some financial information, copies of audited financial statements that, that the association may have, any written agreements about, about uh, who's managing the property, things like that. And, and why would they ask for these documents? Why, why would owners be asking for these documents? Do they tell you why they want them? You know, uh, I think really owners have have a legitimate interest in what's going on. A lot of the complaints that we receive have to do with, of course, association fees, special assessments. Uh, you know, having a property and maintaining a property is a very expensive proposition. So a lot of the records requests we get uh, usually follow some kind of an assessment that's or an increase in, or maintenance. An increase in maintenance fees. Yes. And now owners want to have that information and want to know why. Why, you know, why is this uh, coming up now? And right. what is it going to go toward? And is this because when they go to board meetings or they talk to their board members that they're not getting the information directly from them? Is that why they, they have to come to you? You know, a part of it might be that, uh, that they want to see information. You know, they want to have copies of information. Uh, they want to be able to review information and, and maybe make a determination on their own. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so who, who usually makes these complaints? Who asks for these documents? Uh, typical, typically it will be owners. Unit owners. Unit owners who have, who have questions about what's going on. Well, you know, you were talking, I mean, these uh, uh, questions are about uh, uh, unit owners asking for documents. What about complaints regarding managing agents? What kind of complaints do you guys get on managing agents? You know, the complaints are really going to are really going to vary. Uh, sometimes uh, there is a little bit of a, a disconnect between uh, with, that owners might have on who's really doing what in terms of. Uh, is it the board that's taking the action? Is it the managing agent that's doing it on behalf of the board? Or is it a managing agent that's doing it on their own? Uh, so a lot of the questions that we get, I think, have to do with who really is making the decisions. Uh, and it could be that uh, an owner may perceive that the managing agent is, is uh, making, a sp making a determination. And it may really be the association that is voting on it. In terms of other kinds of complaints, uh, we get a lot of complaints about unlicensed activity that may be going on in the condominium. Like what kind of unlicensed activity? A, a lot of what our office does in terms of unlicensed enforcement has to do with unlicensed contracting activity. Mm -hmm. And that also includes unlicensed electrical work and unlicensed plumbing work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually just saw it a, a, uh, a, a legal action that our office uh, finished up and it had to do with an association that had hired an unlicensed person to do what I thought would be pretty extensive plumbing work in the building uh, and that work included opening, uh, replacing, uh, replacing uh, fixtures, opening drywall to access and actually opening concrete walls to oh, access wow. water lines. So if I had any words of advice for condominium associations is, you know, if you're going to do, uh, if you're going to do construction work, if you're doing electrical work, plumbing work, then you really should consider hiring a licensed person to do it. Okay, I guess they're not coming to our seminars because <laughs> Sue Savio, I mean, that's her mantra. It, that's her mantra. Sue Savio of uh, Insurance Associates, you know, represents almost every condo in the state. And, I mean, that's her big gripe. I mean, you have to use licensed contractors. You just need to do that because there's just too much exposure to an association, if, especially if you're, you know, insured by one of her carriers. 
right? right. Uh, if you don't use a licensed contractor, then it creates all kinds of problems for the building. Sure, you can have a leak that happens in after you've sealed up the concrete. Again, you can have one leak leak in the basement that's occurring. Uh, that nobody's caught and that can wreak real havoc. And then in terms of doing other uh, fixes, especially if it's in common areas that uh, the public has access to, I can see where liability would be an issue. We're talking about complaints. Explain the process to our audience. How, if somebody wants to make a complaint, how do they do that? Sure. Well, first of all, they, they can call our office or they can download a copy of the complaint form off the RICO website. Uh, and I think we have, I think we have a copy of the website somewhere. I mean, they can go to the um, to the website ad address that's flashing across the right, screen, right? Right. Yep. And then we have we have one page that talks about how to file a complaint with our office, uh, print the form, fill it out. We are going to ask for specific pieces of information, and we are going to ask that the complaint form be signed. Uh, but essentially, it's it's putting down uh, and letting our office know what you think the complaint may be. Uh, when the complaints received from our by our office, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at it and first of all see if there's a p possible licensing law violation. Uh, you know, a lot of times consumers will come to us; uh, they think something should be a violation, uh, but sometimes the licensing laws don't address what the consumer is really getting at. Uh, for example, uh, being told uh, having to wait too long in your doctor's office that's mm -hmm. actually not covered by by the licensing laws. So that's not something that we would that we would further investigate as a complaint. The other thing we do is we, we look at the complaint and make sure that there's sufficient information for us to go on. Uh, we get a lot of tip information and we do accept tip, tip information, but incomplete information can be hard on for our office to act on. Uh, so for example, there's unlicensed activity happening in Coppola. Uh, we need a little bit more to go on. So the next thing that, that we're gonna look at is to make sure that there's sufficient information on that complaint form. Uh, for condominium, written condominium uh, requests for, for condominium documents, we're going to ask consumers to fill out uh, a written request for condominium association records. Uh, one of the things that we learned over time with these kinds of complaints is that a lot of it, a lot of the disconnect between owners and associations about the kinds of records that owners were wanting to get was uh, uh, might have been boiling down to some confusion about what records might actually be available. Mm -hmm. So what we did was uh, our awesome condominium team put together a, a written request for condominium association records. It really tracks the statute in terms of what an owner can get and it asks the owner uh, to, to sign it, date it, submit it to the association so the clock can start ticking and everybody understands what's being asked for and how soon the association be re should be responding And back. Un under this form, how, how, how much time does the association have to turn over the document? Generally about 30 days about and 30 that's days. by statute. Okay. Okay, you know, we're going to take a break now. We're going to take a break now for about a minute okay. and then we will come back and we will talk to Daria Loy Goto. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, welcome back to Condo Insider. My name is Jane Sugimura, and uh, I'm your host today. And we have as our guest uh, Daria Loy Goto, who's the Chief Enforcement Officer for RICO. Uh, that's the state agency that uh, does the enforcement of the condo statute. And so we're very happy to have you here. And Daria was uh, talking about the process on how 
uh, someone can make a complaint to our office uh, regarding uh, condominiums or managing agents. And we're flashing on the, uh, on the show the uh, website for anybody who wants to go there, and it's got lots of information on what exactly RICO does and how to make a complaint and uh, how to uh, uh, work through that system. But you know, let's talk about the statute. There is a statute, condominium statute, 514B-154. And um, you were involved when, when, when you were involved in discussions when this was being legislated. It was Senator Baker who, who put this together. And, and I can remember uh, being in the room, and she was just very frustrated because she was getting these complaints every year about documents that condo boards would not allow their owners to have, right? Right. And what she did is she, so there are various portions because the statute was enacted in pieces. So in one place it said you had to turn over board minutes and in another place it said you had to turn over financial records and then in another place it says you had to turn over contracts. And so 154 is where Senator Baker took all of those little pieces and kind of put them in one place. Right. 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 So, right. So, so it's not like she created a new law. She just took all the pieces that were already there and put them in one place so that people wouldn't have to search all around the statute to figure out what, in fact, they could get. And you were talking about a form. So the form, you said, tracks the statute. Right. And so. we, you know, we were fortunate enough to, to be working with Senator Baker for a couple of years now. And you know, she really uh, has been such an advocate for owners. Uh, and I have to say that uh, you know, so many legislators this year have been so responsive to uh, inquiries and questions and concerns that condominium association owners have, um, and especially because the cost of living in an association, the maintenance fees are going up. So, but you know, the legislature has been so responsive uh, in terms of trying to move us forward on getting owners to where, uh, to a good place where they can be accessing the information and really meaningfully participating in what's been going on. So, uh, following what uh, Senator Baker's good work on this, what we did was create this written request for condominium association records. And it basically lists the documents that you can lists get. Lists the documents that you can get. So that means that on it, if you want minutes, then yep. you just check the box that says yep. minutes, and you have financial yep. records. What other documents? And, and it's have you got, got a place for uh, condominium management agreement, insurance policies, contracts, invoices. And it's got a little space on the space on the side, so you can fill in the dates and the times, any other specific information uh, that you want to put in. And, and what our goal is, is that owners will use this, fill out what they want, and give it over to the association. And this gives the association something very straightforward to go down and say, yes, we have, yes, we don't have. Uh, and then what, we, what our team also came up with is a response to request for mm -hmm. condominium association records. Uh -huh. So when the association is responding back, they can use the RICO form, fill it out, nice little table, uh, and give this over to the owner with the, with the record, and if they're not going to give the record, some explanation about why they're not going to get the record. Uh, what's been really helpful for us is if the records uh, question isn't being met, if there's still some confusion, what the consumer can do is give us both of these documents with their complaint form. And that really has helped to jumpstart uh, any RICO investigations that we're going to enter into. Uh, and, you know, in the old days, we would get, you know, 20, 20, 30 pages of emails back and forth. I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. Uh, and what the forms really did was it reduced it down to, you know, two very discrete pieces of paper, and it really has helped move these investigations much faster. And, you know, these documents that the owners are requesting, they're not free, are they? There's, they're not. They're not. And, and they're, that's reasonable because that means somebody's, somebody's, some employee at some management company or the association has to take time to look for these documents and, and make them available to the owner. So there is, these things are not free. Right, right, right. There is a charge. There is a charge. And that charge is specified in the statute. It is set forth in, in statute. Right. Yep. And so, so, so in, in other words, the unit owner can get documents, and a lot of these documents, some of them like minutes and even some of the 
uh, like the declaration and the bylaws, some of them are available if the association has a website. Right. Right. Uh, I, right. We are aware that a lot of associations are putting uh, very, very basic documents, bylaws, declarations, things like that, making it making it available uh, electronically, right. which is great. And we've also seen some websites that will require a password for the owner, uh, and then that that has some measure of protection on, on so that they can go in and look at their monthly financial statements, and 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 and, right. and they some of them may not be able to print it, but at least they they have access to it. Right. And then and then if they want a, a hard copy, they can ask the association. They and they are charged a reasonable charge for that copy. That's what we understand. Yeah. And and the charge in the. The, um, the amount that uh, a person has to pay is set in the statute. In other words, it shall not exceed more than whatever. Right, it right. is, it, right. It's in the statute. Yep, it's and all covered. It's all covered. And also, if uh, someone in the association or the managing agents uh, have to you know, actually go and spend time, there is a charge that is assessed to the unit owner for that. Right. And right. so it's not like it's, it's a big secret. They are told before they make the request exactly what it's going to cost how them. much the how much the anticipated cost might right. be and also the fact that some of it might be free right and some of it according to the statute you can borrow it in other words you can loan you can you go can and inspect it you right can inspect it at the managing agents or the association's offices and you can kind of ins read it or re review it right there in the office but if you want to take a copy then you will have to pay for it exactly okay. exactly and with this, uh, under the statute, under 5, uh, 154, uh, is there a date, I mean, is there a time, deadline within which you, the association has to produce these documents? You know, I think 30 days is still the, is still the, is still the watchword at, uh, for, in terms of giving records over. Mm -hmm. And um, after the statute was enacted and after you got these forms, did the number of complaints or requests for documents go down, or are they still about the same? No, we, we actually, our, our committee thinks that the number of complaints, the number of inquiries that we're getting has been reduced. Okay. And uh, we think a lot of it might be laying it out for owners, which you can and can't get. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that it has helped to kind of focus the conversation mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of folks. Yep. And, and one of the things, too, you know, and I think I asked you this question before the show, can someone still ask for 20 years' worth of board minutes? I, I think people can still ask for 20, uh, 20 years' so worth of a, board minutes. So this is a, a message to those uh, associations out there who <laughs> don't have a document retention policy. You might talk to your lawyer or your accountant or whoever does these things and get yourself a policy and get rid of those old records because if someone makes a request and you have them, then you have to actually go and look for let's do the search right well we we're gonna apply the law yeah. <laughs> we're gonna apply the law yeah yeah okay well I want to talk about a new law too there's there was yeah. there a, well it's a, not a law it's a bill uh, House bill 1498 mm -hmm. and that does that amended 154 and what it did is it it basically said that and I guess this was a uh, an issue with your agency well the, the contract the employment contract right some some of the inquiries that we were still getting had to do with the employment contract especially for resident managers mm -hmm. so uh, one of the issues that kept popping up was uh, those employment contracts might have some information that is uh, that is sensitive information that uh, might not be disclosed uh, you you know applying other other privacy laws uh, and this and that. So one example is a social security number mm -hmm. for the employee, date of birth information, bank account information, things like that. So um, you know maybe under elsewhere under Hawaii law that information would would be redacted or not appropriate to disclose. And uh, what the bill I think tried to do was to clarify and to provide some guidance for associations on what information would be redacted. And, and I think just to get to the point, one of the complaints we heard, or one of the stories, one of the war stories, at least I heard, was that, uh, that there was a request made 
by unit owner to an association for the resident manager's contract. And when the association finally turned it over, there was so much redacted that you really couldn't, you know, figure out what was in the agreement because sure. everything was redacted. And I, and I think what this bill clarifies is that you can't redact compensation and you cannot redact the job description or the job duties of the resident manager, the site manager, or whoever it is that the association hires to do the day-to-day -day operations of the building. And, and, and it does specifically state that privacy information protected by state and federal law is, it can be redacted, as well as the private cell phone number, the email address, the social security number, any bank account information. And, and so it does say that you can redact those things, but it specifically says you cannot redact the compensation or the job description, which is what I think the, the requester was trying to find out. What is this person getting paid? Right. And what is what is his job? Right. I mean, right. because that was the, I think that that was what I was hearing that you know that's what they were trying to get information about, and they would ask for the uh, contract because uh, five four five five one fifty four says you can have contracts, and then they're told, oh no, but that's an employment agreement, and that's not a contract. Right. And so this bill, if it is signed by the governor, and I think we we think it's going to get signed, for, uh, House Bill fourteen ninety eight does clarify that this employment agreement is a contract that must be turned over, must be provided if requested by an owner. Right, and you, you describe that so eloquently, Jane, <laughs> much, more, <laughs> uh, much, much better than I did. Uh, but yes, that's what we think that this bill does. Uh, Rico did offer comments in support of it because we do think that clarifying Mm -hmm. uh, is going to be helpful for both owners and associations. Uh, and that is the information that they want. They want to know how much this, this employee is making and what they're supposed to be doing for that salary. Well, let me just say one more thing because we're getting close to the end of the show. Okay. And um, you know, it seems to me that you know, what you're saying uh, or the message you're trying to get to the associations, you know, if you were transparent and if you would communicate with your owners, maybe you wouldn't have a job. <laughs> right? You, 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 or you would have more time to spend with other, you know, regular. Well, 49 industries, Jane, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. you know. So, so you would have more time to spend with others. Right. We, we always have a lot going on. We push the education piece hard because we want, um, we want people in this area to get the information that they need, to participate in the governance, uh, and to be happy with the associations that, that they're living in. So we're really trying to be responsive to concerns in this area and you know we uh, we are pleased as punch when associations are saying can you go to the RICO website and use this form because it'll make it much easier for us right and you know and 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 I really appreciate you being here because you know there's so much information that we w want to get out to the unit owners right so that they can participate fully and 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 try to make uh, the relationship between owners and the boards much more uh, less stressful, right? And so that everybody, because we all have to live in the same place. Yes, we we need to learn to uh, live together, work together, and get along. And uh, for our viewers, thank you for joining us today, and thank you, Daria, for joining us and giving us all this information. Don't forget the website, the website address for all of your uh, issues that you uh, regarding uh, documents and complaints against boards and managing agents. And be sure to uh, uh, tune in next week. We're doing uh, an update on the legislative. Our legislative update is next week. So please join me and Richard uh, Emery, and we will, doing the, we will be doing the legislative update on new laws. Thank you very much for joining us today.